Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. Today is Saturday. Happy Saturday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. Today is the day that we're reading God's Word together. So I'm reading from the Amplified Version. We're reading through the New Testament. We're in the book of John right now. So I'm starting on John 13, the Lord's Supper. Now, why are we reading these words? Why are we reading this stuff? Because we want to get to know the Lord so much more, right? We want to get to be, have a relationship, be so close. Like going to church, listen to messages, and praying, all those things are good to do. Giving, serving, all of those things are great things to do in your life. But you want to get to know somebody on a personal level, right here. Get in His Word so you can read from it, so you can learn from it, and you can learn what it, God's will is for you on this earth. Pretty good. So we're in John chapter 13. It's the Lord's Supper. Now before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his hour had come and it was time for him to leave this world and return to the Father. Having greatly loved his own who were in the world, he loved them and continuously loves them with his perfect love to the end eternally. It was during supper when the devil had already put the thought of betraying Jesus into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, that Jesus, knowing that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was now returning to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe, and taking a servant's towel, he tied it around his waist. And Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Then he poured water into the basin and began washing the disciples' feet and wiping them with the towel which was tied around his waist. When he came to Simon Peter, he said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied to him, You do not realize now what I am doing, but you will fully understand it later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. We can have nothing to do with each other. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, in that case, wash not only my feet, but also wash my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, Anyone who has bathed needs only to wash his feet and is completely clean, and you, my disciples, are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. For that reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put on his outer robe and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right in doing so, for that is who I am. So if I, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet as well. For I gave you this as an example so that you should do in turn as I did to you. I assure you, most solemnly say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed, happy and favored by God if you put them into practice and faithfully do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but this has happened in order that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has raised up his heel against me as my enemy. From now on, I am telling you what will happen before it occurs, so that when it does take place, you may believe that I am who I I say I am the Christ, the anointed, the Messiah. I assure you, most solemnly say to you, the one who receives and welcomes whomever I send receives me, and the one who receives me receives him who sent me in the same way. Jesus predicts his betrayal. After Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and terrified and said, I assure you, most solemnly say to you, one of you will betray me and hand me over. The disciples began looking at one another, puzzled and disturbed as to whom he could mean. One of his disciples whom Jesus loved, which means esteemed, was leaning against Jesus' chest. That's John. So P Simon Peter motioned to him, which was John, and quietly asked him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. Then leaning back against Jesus' chest, he, John, asked him privately, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I am going to give this piece of bread. After I have dipped it, so when he had dipped the piece of bread into the dish, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. After Jesus had taken the, bread of bre the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What are we going to do? Do quickly. But no one reclining at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that since Judas, as the treasurer of the group, had the money box, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he was going to give something to the poor. After taking the piece of bread, he went out immediately, and it was night. So when Judas had left, Jesus said, now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him, the Son, in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while. You will look for me as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you are not able to come. I am giving you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, so that you too are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love 
and unselfish concern for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will be able to follow later. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? I assure you, most solemnly say to you, before a rooster crows, you will deny and completely disown me three times. So here's Peter saying, Jesus, I'm going to follow you forever and ever and ever until they start questioning me, until they start cutting me down on my social media platform, <laughs> until they start saying you shouldn't talk like that, until they give you a strike for saying the wrong thing. No. you got to stand firm and stand bold in the day when it's coming against you to be able to stand against and listen to God, speak when he says to speak, and do when he says to do so that you can be blessed by what the Lord has for you. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, or cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith and hold on to it. Rely on it. Keep going and believe also in me. Those are words that you can use every single day. <laughs> Don't let your heart be troubled. How easy is it to flip on the news and let your heart be troubled? Don't let it be troubled. Don't let it be afraid or cowardly. Believe, which means have confidence and faith and trust in God that he's going to take care of you. You need to rely on it and you need to keep going. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am you will also be. And to the place where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? <laughs> Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God, and the real truth, and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus' oneness with the Father. If you had really known me, you would have also known my Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and then we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you do not know me yet, Philip, nor recognize clearly who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not say on my own initiative or authority, but the Father, abiding continually in me, does his works, attesting miracles and acts of power. And also, the Lord is also in you, abiding continually, if you allow him to come in there and stay, right? And to work out things in your life. He's there. You just got to allow him to have access to things. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the very works themselves which you have witnessed. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do. And, so he's going to do what Jesus does, and do even greater things than these in extent and outreach because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representative that I will do so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I will do it. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. So he's like, if you ask anything and do it in my name as my representative, this will I do. But if you really love me, <laughs> you'll keep and obey those commandments on top of doing the other things. The role of the Spirit. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper a comforter, an advocate, an intercessor, a counselor, a strengthener, stand by to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because the world cannot get it and take it to heart because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. I will not leave you as an orphan, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. I will come back to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will also live. On that day when the time comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Remember that the Holy Spirit, once you accept Jesus as your Savior, that Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, and you've got him living inside. You've got the, we don't need to have Jesus here right next to us. That'd be pretty awesome to tell us what to do every day, right? How to live and how to do it. We've got somebody even greater, he says. He lives inside of us. That's pretty cool. The person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. I will make myself real to him. Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, If anyone really loves me, he will keep my word, my teachings, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. One who does not really love me does not keep my words, and the word teaching which you hear is not mine, but is the Father's who sent me. I have told you these things while I am still with you, but the Helper, 
this is the Holy Spirit. He's the comforter, the advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby. Mm, I love that. So this is what, these are, I'm going to stop for a minute, in 26, these are words that the helper, the Holy Spirit, is, is considered the comforter. So when you're sad and when you're weeping and you're upset and depressed, he's your comforter. He's your advocate. When people aren't standing up for you or you feel like you're just getting pushed back and not getting anything even though you're doing right, he's your advocate to fight for you. He's your intercessor. When you don't know what to pray, you don't know what to do, he goes before the Father and gets what you need from that. He's your counselor. Sometimes you just need like help, like what do I do? What do I say? He will help you with that. He's your strengthener. He is going to make you stronger inside so that you don't waver and you don't have to falter and go based on your feelings. And he's your standby, the person that stands by waiting for you right there. He's always there. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I've told you. Peace I leave with you. So Jesus leave in peace. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you the strength and courage for every challenge. You heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you really loved me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going back to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I've told you now before it happens, so that when it does take place, you may believe and have faith in me. I will not speak with you much longer, for the ruler of this world, who is the ruler of the world, not God, Satan, is coming. And he has no claim on me, no power over me, nor anything that he can use against me. He has nothing. If we can get that point, I was thinking that the other day, I thought, how how great to get our lives so in tune with God that we realize that Satan has zero, zero authority, zero power over you. And he has no claim. He has nothing. Because how easy we fall pray, pray to it and just go, oh, he's, he's coming. He's got it. Oh, this bad thing. What if we just realized our authority and our position and didn't allow him anything in our life? Mm, I want to get to that in my life. I want him to be afraid of me, afraid of what I'll say, afraid of what I'll do, afraid of how I'll act. That's pretty good. But so that the world may know without any doubt that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father has commanded me and an act in full agreement with him. Get up, let us go from here. Chapter 15. Jesus is the vine, the followers are branches. I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Do you know what? God will take some branches out of your life. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Do you ever feel like you're being pruned? And, or stretched, or any of those words that you feel like are stripped from things in your life, God's doing good things, right? You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings what I have discussed with you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit, reproducing evidence of your faith, unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise apart from me, that is, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire and they're burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this, when you bear much fruit and prove yourself to be my true disciple. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Disciples' relation to each other. This is my commandment that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. This is what he wants you to do to other disciples. Not to anybody else. Disciples. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends, and if you keep on doing what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you my friends, because I have revealed to you everything I have heard from my Father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you, so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whenever you ask of the father in my name as my representative he may give to you this is what i command you that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another 
Disciples' relation to the world. If the world hates you, and it does, no, it will hate you, and know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. It would treat you with affection, but you are one not but you are not of the world. You no longer belong to it, but I've chosen you out of the world. And because of this, the world hates you. Remember and continue to remember that I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these hurtful things to you for my name's sake, because you bear my name and are identified with me, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have the guilt of their sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done among them the works attesting miracles, which no one ever else did, they would not have the guilt of their sin. But now the fact is that they have both seen these works and have hated me and continue to hate me and my father as well. But this is so that the world which has been written in their law would be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper, remember what the helper does, he comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify and bear witness all about me. But you will also testify and be my witnesses, because you have been with me from the beginning. Chapter 16, Jesus' warning. I have told you these things that you will not stumble or be caught off guard and fall away. So Jesus gives us this warning that, so you don't stumble, you don't fall away, you, you know what's going to happen, you know you're going to be hated, you know you're going to be persecuted. So he says, I tell you these things so you don't stumble or you don't go, wow, why is the world so bad? Why are these people doing this? Why, are, why is the government this way? I tell you these things so you don't stumble and don't go, oh my goodness, the world's going to end. No, because you know what's going to happen. They will put you out of the synagogues and make you outcast. And a time is coming when whoever kills you will think that he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you these things now so that when their time comes, you will remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you at the beginning because I was with you. The Holy Spirit is promised. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts and taken complete possession of them. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, which is the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in close fellowship with you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a savior and about righteousness and about judgment, about sin and the true nature of it because they do not believe in me and my message about righteousness, personal integrity, and godly character, because I am going to my Father and you will no longer see me, about judgment, the certainty of it, because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged and condemned. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear to hear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you. So the Holy Spirit is going to guide you into all the truth, full and complete truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it to you. All these things that the Father has are mine. Because of this, I said that he, the Spirit, will take from what is mine and will reveal it to you. Jesus' death and resurrection foretold. A little while and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean when he tells us? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while you will see me because I'm going to my Father? So they were saying, what does he mean when he says a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, are you wondering among yourselves about what I meant when I said a little while and you will not see me? And again, a little while you will see me? I assure you, most solemnly say to you that you will weep and grieve in great mourning and the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has pain because her time to give birth has come. But when she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of her joy that a child has come into the world. So for now, you are in grief, but I will see you again, and then your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take away from you your great joy. Nobody can take away your great joy from you. Happiness is an emotion, right? But joy is something inside that no one can take away, no matter what. Prayer promises. In that day, you will not need to ask me about anything. I assure you, most solemnly say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, as my representative, he will give you. Until now, you have not asked the Father for anything in my name, but now ask and keep on asking, and you will receive so that your joy may be full 
and complete. I've told you these things in figurative language, veiled languages, and proverbs. The hour is now coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you ask in my name that I am not saying to you, I will ask the Father on your behalf because it will not it will be unnecessary. For the Father himself tenderly loves you because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from the Father. I came from the Father and have come into the world again. I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly to us and not in figures of speech. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. Because of this we believe without any doubt that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now... At last, believe. Take careful notice. An hour is coming and has arrived when you will all be scattered, each to his own home, leaving me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you these things that you, that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. Remember those things. The high priestly prayer. When Jesus had spoken these things, he raised his eyes to heaven in prayer and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Just as you have given him power and authority over all mankind, now glorify him so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him to be his permanently and forever. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true supreme and sovereign God, and in the same manner know Jesus as the Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you down here on the earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself and the glory and majesty that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name and revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. And they were yours, and you gave them to me, and you have, they have kept and obeyed your word. Now at last they know with confident assurance that all you have given me is from you. It is really and truly yours. For the words which you gave me, I have given them. And they received and accepted them and truly understood with confident assurance that I came from you, from your presence, and they believed without any doubt that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. And all these things that are mine are yours, and all these things that are yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, yet they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, so that you may be just as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them and protected them, and not one of them was lost except the Son of Destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Disciples in the World but now I'm coming to you and I say these things while I'm still in the world so that you may experience my joy made full and complete and perfect within them, filling their hearts with my delight. I've given to them your word, the message you gave me, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world and do not belong to the world just as I am not of the world and do not belong to it. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them and protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart for their, your purposes and make them holy. Your word is truth. Just as you commissioned and sent me into the world, I have commissioned and sent them into the world. For their sake, I sanctify myself to do your will so that they may also be sanctified, which means to set apart, dedicated, made holy in your truth. I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for those who will ever believe and trust in me through my, their message, that they may be one just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be one in us so that their world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. So that's his prayer to God the Father that what he wants for us. And this is the future glory he wants. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one just as we are one in them and you and me, that they may be perfected and completed into one so that the world may know without any doubt that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given to me, as your gift to me, may be with me where I am, so they may be see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, just and righteous Father, although the world has not known you, and has never acknowledged you, and the revelation of your mercy, yet I have always known you, and these believers know, without any doubt, that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them, and I will continue to make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them overwhelming their hearts and I may be in them. That's a good prayer. 
18. Judas betrays Jesus. Having said these things, Jesus left with his disciples and went across the ravine of the Kidron. There was a garden there, which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who was betraying him, knew the place because Jesus had met, often met them there with his disciples. So Judas, having obtained the Roman cohort and some officers from the high priests and the Pharisees, came there with the lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was about to happen, went to them and asked, Whom do you want? They assured him, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus said, I am he. And Judas, who was betraying him, was also standing there. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. When he said the word, I am he, they fell back to the ground. That was some Holy Spirit right there. Again, he asked them, whom do you want? And they answered, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you want me, let these men go on their way. This was to fulfill and verify the words that he had spoken. Of those whom you have given me, I have not lost even one. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put the sword back in its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup from which my father has given me? Jesus before Annas and Caiaphas. So the cohorts and their commander and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die on behalf of the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Now that disciple was known to the high priest, so he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the residence of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the door. So the other disciple, John, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter inside. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a fire of coals because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. And Peter was with them, standing and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teachings. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue and in the temple area where all the Jews habitually congregate, and I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Question those who have heard what I said to them. They know what I said. But when he had said this, one of the officers who was standing nearby struck him in the face saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If I had said anything wrong, make a formal statement about the wrong. But if I spoke properly, why did you strike me? So Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter's denial of Jesus. Now Simon Peter was still standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. Once again, one of the high priest's servants, a relative of the one whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see you with him in the garden? So Peter denied it again and immediately the rooster crowed. Jesus' words are always true. <laughs> Jesus before Pilate. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the governor's palace. Now it was early and the Jews did not enter the um, governor's palace so they would not be un or ceremonially unclean, but might be able to eat and participate in the feast of unleavened bread, which began after the Passover supper. So Pilate came out and, to them and asked, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If he were not a criminal, he would not have handed him over to you for judgment. Then Pilate said, Take him ourselves and judge him according to your own law. Then Jesus said, the Jews said, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to indicate by what manner of death he was going to die. So Pilate went into the... Um, place, the predatorium, and again, and called Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, are you saying this on your own initiative or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own people and their chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done that is worthy of death? Jesus replied, my kingdom is not of this world, nor does it have its origin in this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting hard to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this world. So Pilate said to him, then you are a king? Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. That is why this is why I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth, who is a friend of the truth, and belongs to the truth, hears and listens carefully to my voice. Pilate said to him scornfully, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no guilt in him, no crime, no cause for accusation. But you have a custom that I shall release someone for you at the Passover, so shall I release for you the king of the Jews? Then they shouted back, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. All right, so we're going to stop reading there so then we can continue on next week. So what great words and scriptures. A lot of things that Jesus says about himself and what he is going to give us. And I love that. The high priestly prayer. This is his prayer to the Father about us. That's a good thing to go back and read again and just to be able to go, okay, 
what Jesus has for us, what he says to us. And then my favorite is the what, what he's going to send. It's, it's so much better for him, he says, to, to leave and not be with us and to send the comforter because the comforter is going to stand in truth. He's going to reveal the truth in plain English, not in parables. He says that in plain English, what plain words, English because you might speak another language, in plain words to what he has you to do. And so I love it because what is the counselor, what is the, the Holy Spirit? He's your helper helper, someone that helps you. Do you need a helper in this life? Do you ever feel alone? Know that you're not alone, that you have a helper. You have a, a comforter, someone that's going to comfort you, that someone's going to wipe away those tears that you have at night, something that's going to be your advocate. When you're feeling like you're getting pushed down and pressed down and not having anybody stand for you, you have an advocate. And then you also have an intercessor so that you have someone going on your behalf before you that's going to intercede for you, that's going to help you get what God wants in your life. You have a counselor, someone that comes to you, wraps his arms around you and comforts you and says, hey, let me get you through this. This is wrong thinking patterns. These are wrong things you need to be thinking about. And he also is your strength there, someone that makes you stronger. Once you can get through something and you go, okay, I feel a little bit stronger because of that. I feel a little bit like I can stand more on my feet because of that. And then your standby, your person that's there all the time, always there. Whenever you need it, boom, it's right there. Like my, my computer screen here, when it's on standby mode. So whenever I open my laptop, boom, it's wide open. It's right there whenever I need it. That is how the Holy Spirit is for us. Boom, whenever you need it, it's right there. It doesn't like wait for it to get there. You don't have to beg and plead with God to send it to you. It's just there. That's a pretty cool thing to have the Holy Spirit, the role of the Spirit. That's what you want to acknowledge in your life. And a lot of people don't live by that because that just sounds scary and it sounds like, oh, I've got a crazy, what do you call it, the Holy Ghost in that? <laughs> I think it's the King James Version has the Holy Ghost. So that sounds all just too weird or just too much. But if you recognize that, no, Jesus sends that. God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to help us. There's a specific role for it. That's why you can be led by the Spirit. And the Spirit reveals all truth. And you will, He will show you the written Word of God and the words of truth in His God's Word. That's why we're reading this every single day. You might not get anything out of this today. And you might go, okay, what is this? But next week, the Holy Spirit might reveal something to you. Something to you and you'd go, wait, I just read that. What was that? And you can go back in your Bible and look back at it and read. Getting that inside of you. It doesn't have to be memorized. It doesn't have to have it, but it's there for a purpose and a reason, and God will reveal it to you, and God will bring it up when you need it specifically in your life. So pretty exciting and pretty cool. Love reading about it. Love reading what God has for me in my life and what is going to happen in my life and the future that's going to have because I've got that person on standby. I've got that Holy Spirit right there to counsel me, to strengthen me, to be my advocate, to be my comforter, to be my intercessor for what is to come. That's a pretty good and exciting thing that you know that you can have. It says it right here in his word. So guess what? It's right here. Believe it, trust it, and go with it. It's pretty good. So let's pray, and then you guys can go about your day. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our day, Lord. Thank you for your words, your comfort. Your words of truth, Lord, that just show us that, like, what it is you have for us, Lord. I love hearing more and more about your plan for our life, Lord, what it is you have for us and, and learning more truths and what you say, who you say that we are with you, who you say that you're going to send to us, that we know we can have these tools, we can have these devices, we can have these, the comforter, we can have that advocate in our life and just the one that's going to be there with us no matter what, Lord. We're not alone. We're not alone in this world, Lord, and we have you. We have the Holy Spirit that lives with us every single day of our life that we can get through anything, Lord. Just help our minds to be open to hearing your voice to hearing the Holy Spirit speak, and to recognizing that this is what we need to be doing. This is where we need to be going. This is what we need to be focusing on. Lord, Lord help us to renew our minds and renew our hearts, Lord, that we can be open up to everything that you have for us, Lord. This year, we want to get so close to you, Lord, that we don't miss a thing. We want your army to rise up against the world, or rise up against, to take a stand and take a whole firm foundation in the things of this world that are trying to come against and trying to overshadow you, Lord, but you'll never be overshadowed because you know what? You're not darkness. You're light. The light will never turn to darkness. There's, you just The darkness cannot overcome that light. So we have to remember that, Lord. So want our lights to shine so bright for you, Lord, that your name is glorified in all the nations and glorified in all the world, Lord Jesus. That darkness can try to snuff it out, but guess what? There's another one lit. And now it's one big giant flame, Lord Jesus, for all the world to see that your glory is going to be manifested on this earth, Lord Jesus. Help us to be strengthened with your words and with your truths that we can go out and be that light in the world, Lord Jesus. We love you so much. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
All right, so you guys have a fantastic, I'm talking fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you guys again on Monday for another video. So if you need a church, go check out my church, Upward Christian Fellowship, another place to be together with other believers online, be able to get some more of that word and a little bit more of that truth inside so that you can help grow your relationship. Remember I talked this last week about how much time we spent with the Lord. I compared it to our phones and just like I think on, I think on any phone it kind of tells you your activity and how much time you spend on different things. Get that time with the Lord bigger than those times that you spend on those social media platforms, on those games, on that surfing time, on that YouTube scrolling time, all those things. Get our time with God to be greater than that. Log in your time with God. That's a pretty good thing. <laughs> Let your Bible app be way bigger than your social media time. That would be pretty cool. So, all right, have a beautiful rest of your day, and I will see you guys again on Monday for another video. We'll see ya. Bye.